everyone. We send you greetings from St. Matthew's Temple, Church of God in Christ, where our pastor is none other than Superintendent J.L. Griffin. We truly hope that the Lord has blessed you in the days gone by, and we truly hope that you get out and enjoy this beautiful weather that the Lord has blessed us with. You know, we've been stuck in the house for so long with bad weather, it's a blessing to see the sun shining. We hope that this message and the services today bless your souls. We hope that you tune in and find out what the Lord has to say to us today. Because no matter what's going on in the world, we know that God is always in control. And at this time, we'll have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for everything you have done for us. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Lord, we thank you for how you woke us up this morning with the blood running warm in our veins. We thank you that you touched us with a finger of love. Lord, we thank you for how you've watched over us day in and day out. We thank you for how you have healed broken bodies and mended the, the minds that have been confused, Lord. We just thank you for all things. We ask you that you go into the hospitals, touch those that need to be touched, watch over those that are confined, Lord. Bring them to you, Lord. Bring them to you. Bring them to you, Lord. Let them know that you are the way and the only way. Lord, we ask you that you watch over our pastor and his wife, Lord, and all our elders, our ministers, the musicians, the missionaries, Lord. Help us to spread the word through song and word, Lord. Watch over us and guide us. Keep us and bless us, Lord, that we might praise you as never before. And Lord, in all these things, we'll be careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory that is due unto you. And all these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And at this time, we will have our scripture reading from Missionary Muriel Banks. Let's amen for her wherever you are. Good morning. I'll be reading Psalms 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmity of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellence and greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and the dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise he the Lord. I have read you Psalms 150 verses 1 through 4. May God have a blessing to the reading of his word.
blessings of the Lord be with each of you today. We're glad once more that you decided to tune in and hear from us and from what thus saith the Lord. Today I'm going to ask Missionary Irving if she would read to us from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, one verse, verse 6. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Thank you, Missionary Irving. The writer of this Hebrew text said, For without faith it is impossible to please God. I want to talk to you for the next few fleeting moments from the subject, Let's Please God. Everybody say after me, let's please God. In the text today, you will find that the writer uses the word impossible. He uses that word impossible to explain the uselessness and the futility of attempting to please God without faith. The word impossible leaves no options. Impossible states in very certain and unequivocal terms that it simply cannot be done. Now, when dealing with people, we all will readily admit that there are some people it's impossible to please. Some people, you can give them a mile and they want you to go an extra mile. Some people, you can bend over backwards and they still say you didn't do anything. The text is not talking about impossible people. The text is talking about God and wanting us to know that God can be pleased. But there is something that makes it impossible to please or not please God, and that is not having faith. Whenever you find yourself without faith, just know God is not pleased. You can be weary. You can be worn out. You can be broke. You can be alone. You can be lost. But if you have faith, God is still pleased with you. We as the people of God must come to the understanding that the only way to get a good grade report on our report cards at the end of the semester of life is for us to have faith in God. Then our master will give us an A on the report card of life for having blessed him. The only way to become a recipient of God's choicest blessings, his special bonuses, his additional dividends and fringe benefits is to have faith. There are no two ways about it. There's no way that you can please God without faith. Well, then the question begs Sister D. Jean to be asked, Preacher, what is faith? Well, the King James Version says that Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The Living Bible puts it this way. It's the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It's the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us even though we can't see it up the road. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Faith, then, is the reality which lies beyond our dreams. It's unseen existence beyond our hope, and it's the unproven fact of our belief. Let's please God. To have faith, church, in God, you must be willing to take orders from an inaudible voice. To have faith in God, you must be willing to follow invisible signs. 
and to hold on to intangible objects. The possessors of faith sometimes find themselves hearing sounds and seeing objects which are totally non-existent as far as the unbeliever is concerned. The unbeliever looks at you strange when you start singing up above my head. I hear music in the air. They think about getting you signed into the asylum. But you have faith to know that there is music beyond earthly music. Faith then is standing. Thank you, Jesus. In the darkness while waiting on the light. Ooh, I like that. Standing in the darkness symbolizes a situation in which your hopes and your yearnings have not yet been materialized. On the other hand, waiting on the light symbolizes a situation in which you are not so sure, but you are sure that the light will come and that there is an unfaltering trust you have in the light even though you don't see it. I heard the Hebrew boys told the king, we don't know exactly what God will do, but we have enough faith to know that either way he will deliver us from you, O king. And our faith then tells us that we will not bow. This is the kind of faith that God requires before he will act. Many times our prayer saints have been found favorable with God and our requests have already been approved. Many times the blessings that we have prayed for have been wrapped up and addressed to us, but God refuses to send them until we exhibit a certain amount of faith. Oh, thank you. God has to be pleased with us before he will allow his blessings to be delivered to us. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, if you want to receive the blessings of God, if you want your prayers answered, if you want to see your dreams come true, then you must put your trust, not in man, but you must put your trust in God and start walking by faith and not by sight. Abraham was told by God one day to get up and leave your homeland. Go somewhere that you don't even know of, but I'll direct you there. And by faith, the Bible said, Abraham got up and moved. Faith is an action word. Faith is a word that makes you do things when you don't even know sometimes why you are doing it. But we today do not walk by sight. We walk by faith. Not by facts, but by faith. Not by knowledge, church, but we walk by faith. Not by a road map, but we are walking by faith. We don't walk, Sister D. Jean, by a contract, but we walk by faith. I must close, but I really don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. Who thank you, Jesus. I don't borrow from tomorrow's sunshine. For it's a possibility that tomorrow just might bring rain. I really don't worry about the future. For I know what Jesus said. And many things about tomorrow I really don't understand. To tell you the truth, there are some things about today that I don't understand. But I do know who holds tomorrow. And as I close today, man or woman, boy or girl, I say to you, whatever you are going through, 
please God. Make it your business to get faith in God. Shut your ears to the naysayers. Close your eyes to the unbelievers. And tell God, Lord, if you said it. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But if you said do it, I'm willing to say yes, Lord. Somebody help me say, let's please God. God said that if your ways please me. I don't care how your enemy might care. But if your ways please me. I serve a God that's able to be pleased. I serve a God that is happy to be pleased. And when you please God, God will give you the desires. Uh I'm not going out there today. I'm going to leave you there. But tell somebody, let's please God. I'm the dog, I'm the job, Dr. Johnson. I do feel pretty good if my comrades are happy with me. But my main objective, I'm the job, if there are 200 or 300 employees, my objective is to please my boss. What are you saying, Brother Griffin? You can like me if you will. Or you really don't have to like me. But I'm about trying to please God. I want my faith to get so strong in God. I'll close, but I remember a preacher. Dynamic gospel preacher going home to be with the Lord. Name was Nathan Simmons, Elder Johnson. Yes, and I used to look at him when he gets get up and I would back up on it. I, was, I said, I'm not going to say that. But he had such faith in God. Until before he would preach, he would pray. And in his prayer, he would say to the Lord, Now, Lord, I'm getting ready to deliver your word. And he said, I want you to either anoint me or kill me. Now that's faith. See, the enemy will hamper us sometimes, doesn't want us to have that kind of faith. And sitting right in the audience and hearing him say that, the enemy will speak to me. And tell me, say, Griffin, don't you pray that prayer. Say, because you know, sometimes you get up and preach and say, you go just preach. Say, but really, you didn't feel the anointing. And said, you're going to invite God to kill you if you don't anoint you? But when you can get faith to please God, get up in the morning and it's raining in your life. Get up in the morning and everybody, but the cat is upset with you. The dog barking at you. The roaches won't run out of the kitchen. Folk you know don't like you. But you take a moment and drop to your knees and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. God said, if your ways please me, then I'll give you the desires of your heart. Impossibilities. Don't rest just a tiny with God when it comes to faith. If you have faith in God, the sky is the limit. If you have faith in God, church, God will take you places you never thought you would go. Hear this little Utica fellow. 
I've been places I never thought I would go. Amen. Met people I never thought I would meet. Yeah. Simply because I had faith in God. Yeah. And if God says it, you can go ahead and do it. He didn't want to preach. Not to the Ninevites. But the word of the Lord came unto him. And said, Jonah, get up and go down to Nineveh. And by faith, after Jonah tried to run and dodge what he should have done, when he decided to please God, then God gave the whale or the gigantic fish indigestion. And the fish couldn't hold on to Jonah. He had to come ashore and bring Jonah up. When it weighs, please God. Jonah got down in wicked Nineveh and went to the breadth and width and diameter of the city and said, repent. And if you don't do it within 40 days, said God's going to destroy the city. But I'm closing by telling you when your, when your ways please God. God didn't tell Jonah to go down to Nineveh and preach to the king. He said, go to the city and preach to the city. The lesson didn't say that Jonah got an audience with God or he was ushered into the king's palace. Yes, but somehow or other, when Jonah started preaching, the king heard the message. Yes. When your ways please God, yes. he'll open doors and put you in connection with people that you didn't think you would need. Some of you all waiting for your rich uncle to leave you in the wheel. But if your ways start to please God, he'll open up some doors tiny that no blood relative to you will be moved and say, you know, I'm going to bless this person in such and such a monetary way. But we've got to start to saints, please God. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to speak to your people these few minutes to encourage us to let's please you. We ask you today that the mountains we are facing, the problems that we are trying our best to resolve, we're asking you now that we would look to you, start more to read your word and listen to your voice, and then move, act upon what you say. Act upon what your word tells us. Activate our faith for our works are dead without faith. And faith without works is dead. So as we read and hear from you, help us to implement the word into action by faith. We'll give you praise, honor, and glory. Young man, hallelujah. God said lift your head. He said, and if you feel too weak to lift it, have faith in him. And he said, I'll be the lifter of your head. Lift your hand where you are now. Ah, it's all right what the doctor said. Jesus said, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. I claim it. Yes, Lord. I claim it. Yes, Lord. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivereth out of them all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you and we thank you even now in Jesus' matchless name. Again, we thank you for listening and we ask you if our ministry is being a blessing to you that you would hit the button Givelify and uh, we will receive what you give and we will be so thankful and uh, bless the Lord and continue to keep you in our prayers. From 12 until 12.30 today, I will be administering drive through communion out front. Anyone that would like to have communion, if you will just pull up in the front of the church starting at 12, be there until 12.30 and serve everyone that would like to have communion. We are looking at uh, possibly opening up the doors. We're just not sure yet what Sunday, Sister Muriel, but Hopefully, we're looking somewhere around the July area. But let's stay prayerful. Understand that the mandates have been eased now, and they say you don't have to wear your mask at certain such places, but we want to expedite caution. And 
so even though they say our trust is in God, we hope that the doctors are knowing and uh, doing what's correct, but our trust is in God. So let's look forward to doing communion this afternoon. The blessings of the Lord. Also, Sister uh, Astina has been telling us from week to week, we're getting a few more people each Saturday coming in for our 12 o'clock recordings. And uh, she will be, as you come, be prepared to let whoever's in charge take your temperature. And they will also have a form that needs to be filled out concerning COVID and the precautions. You're more than welcome to come. And I'm sure if you come, you will be blessed in your coming. Father, God bless us as we go the furtherance of this week that we will look to you by faith and not by sight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. As you know, that pastor has now opened up the church that you are allowed to come and fellowship with us during the recording. So we just want to go over a few household rules for those of you that are coming and, uh, and would like to come. So once again, you must be masked. Your temperature will be taken. And now we have a new form, CDC form, that will be filled out um, on entry. If your temperature is too high, you will not be able to stay. If you do not have a mask, we will provide one for you. Also, the seating is designated where you can sit. There are X's on the chairs. We're asking you to please sit in those seats accordingly. There is no socializing. I must say that again. There is no socializing before or after the recording. We want to do things, as the Bible says, decently and in order. And we want to continue to follow the regulations and the rules the pastor has set for us. Everything is six feet apart. We know that we're, we're anxious to be back together and fellowship with one another. But let's do what we need to do now so we can get to that point a little bit faster. Amen. So thank you for following the rules and regulations. We will be back here next Saturday recording at 12. So if you get here by 1215, that gives us enough time for you to fill out the form and do what we need to do so you can praise the Lord with us. See you next week.